Oh, hello, Mr. Evil. Please oh, call in here. Hello. Oh, Boner to see you. Mind you, know, Queen Boner to see you. <laughs> very nice. I've got my pink chariot outside. If you've been very nice for Sarge, oh, you can tell that she's worth a few bob, can't you? Have you been mm. from Claudia? This is my um, manager. No, uh, I just... The fabulous Beryl. I didn't want to do a documentary solely about my music. I don't want any dissection of melodies. I don't want any, you know, uh, retrospectives or anything like that. But I just think maybe it would be nice to let the public know a little bit more about me um, and my fans know a little bit about me on an intimate level. Here we go. Here's my record promotion, man. <laughs> Squirrel cheeks, no, look. He's got a fucking enough food in those cheeks to feed Namibia for 17 fucking years. <laughs> My that camera, we're trying to wear. Fuck off, fuck off, Sally. Obviously, my relationship with you is very personal, so you have a much better insight and, and, and access to me, which I think is important, but I wouldn't allow anybody else. It would have been impossible to do a documentary with me about five years ago because I, you know, obviously wouldn't have been compass mentis, you know, I'd have told you all to bugger off within three minutes. I don't want the documentary to come across as holier than thou either. I don't want a sycophantic one. I just want people to see how I am. No, I shall get fucking annoyed. <laughs> Stop filming. Ow! Stop filming. <laughs> Stop filming. There they are. Ow! Young bastard. I could give a fuck. I make music. I don't fucking make film. I hate fucking videos. There are fucking loads of them. And I tell you this, I am not doing this video. Well, the car will be back in five minutes. You're going to go to the car. It's not going to be back in five fucking minutes. It's gone right back in the Sarah Manhattan. <laughs> All this month's work that I put in, and someone leaves a fucking bag in a car. <laughs> fucking, I don't believe it. I'll do everything my fucking self in the future. Okay, we're all set. Where was it? It was. He came right back when he arrived. He delivered the book as well. So. I seriously don't want to do this. I know you don't. I know you don't do it. I know you're not. Just give it an hour. I'll tell him you've got one hour. And this is promising to the last video I've ever done. Yes, it is. I mean, you can say it's... I don't want to do it. I really am not in the mood to do this. Oh, come on. This is silly. I'm silly. She's just shooting herself in the foot. You've got months and months of working to do this. Just do one hour. Fucking boring. Fucking videos. I don't make fucking this records to do videos. You're right. You're right. They are. They're absolutely crap. Well, I believe in love. It's all we got. It's painful for him. It's not easy for him. And I wish that it was. And we've discussed it on numerous occasions. And I mean, it's just a shame that it's not more fun for him. Because it should be fun. visual things. I don't like my photograph being taken. I don't like doing videos. It's probably to do with the way I look and the way I think I look and the way I wished I looked. I'm not Madonna and I'm not George Michael. Um, I'm not you know, someone who has a very strong visual image. Um, so I don't really feel that comfortable. Hello, girls. How are you? 
There's a lot of love in this house. This house used to be a rampant um, party house. And did a lot of drugs here. It wasn't a happy house. It was full of furniture and it was full of jukeboxes and pinball machines and stuffed bears. And um, I realized after I got sober that I didn't want that anymore. I wanted to have a home that was comfortable, that we could have people here to stay. And it was full of love and peace. And uh, I think this is what this house is about. Hello, Brian. Hello, Stop just tops. Hello, my darling boy. Are you a mummy's boy? Yeah, I think I am. I think I've always been a mummy's boy. Um, my mum was the one kind of person, apart from my grandmother and my aunt, who are again two other women, that I could really rely on when I was young for support, um, for love. Um, so I'm very, very attached to my mother. She drives me crazy because she always knows what I'm doing. But nobody has stood by me as much as my mother. Nobody has been there for me as much as my mother. Yeah, I'm a mummy's boy. Ah, I'm a mummy's boy! I think the pivotal member of the family was my grandmother. Even though there wasn't a lot of money coming in, she made the most of everything. And uh, she was constant throughout my whole life. He was a great, I mean, later on in my life when I was in Los Angeles and I tried to commit suicide by trying, taking sleeping tablets, throwing myself in the pool, getting out of there. And my grandmother, who's on her first trip to America and says, oh, well, I said, I'll be dead in two hours. I said, oh, I suppose we better go, go home now, right? Suppose we better get packed and go, <laughs> she said. You know, nothing for she was, no, no bullshit for my grandmother. <laughs> how, how were you when that, that happened? How did that, what did you think? It was a terrible, terrible time those days where I wouldn't want to go through them again. Mm. It's, it's an awful thing to see someone you love uh, unhappy, and unhappy enough to want to do something like that. I mean, you couldn't, I couldn't get near you, could I, really? It was, it was a different lifestyle. He got in with a different crowd of people. There were the drugs about, which he denied frantically, but I mean, you know, I'm no, not daft. And I knew he was taking the drugs, but what can you do? I've got no control over him, but it broke my heart to see him like him. Yeah. It was bad enough for you to move away, right? It was. Yeah, I don't know. Get you off a minute. I'm right. tearful, but I think about it. Right. Sorry, no. No, I think you've, you've got to talk about yeah. everything. You've got to talk about everything. You can't just, you have to be honest, this is the whole point of this thing. You've got to, um, you've got to go through it all. And it was just terrible, terrible times. and. And that was the time when we came out to the Rock of the Westies thing. Yeah. I didn't see him all the week. You probably don't remember. Never you remember. was out of it. Until it was backstage before he went on stage. And I can remember coming back and your hands were just all split with playing the piano so hard. And you were putting, I can see you now, putting this stuff onto your skin. He looked terrible. I thought he was going to die. He looked terrible. It's awful to me. It's terrible, really, but it's so sad when I think about it now, even. And then Russell Harvey took a film of it. 
you remember? Mm. And everybody said, we saw you crying, and I thought, they don't know why. They really, they've got no idea why. Did people not know what you were doing? They thought she was crying with joy. I thought I was crying with joy. I was so elated, but I was so worried. It was, it was, no, they was were terrible. That was the start that of it, That was just really. the start of it. Someone saved my life tonight, sugar baby. Sugar baby. I almost had your hooks in me, did you dare? You nearly had me rolled and tied. All about him to die, sweet freedom, whispered in my ear. You're a butterfly, a butterfly, the free to fly, fly away, high away, bye bye. First time I saw him, he came out of London Heathrow Airport. He was about six foot nine, um, wearing this sort of fur cape and a huge feathered hat. So actually, he came to about nine foot three. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, is that him? <laughs> but that was the first time. Now I remember driving along the uh, the motorway. I thought, well, perhaps they don't like to go too fast. Oh. Yeah. So it was him and John Reed in the back, and I was doing about fifty-five, I suppose. And I heard him say, can't you go any faster? <laughs> <laughs> but there was another case when we were coming back from Watford or somewhere where I was drunk, he was in the car, and I said, pull over, I'm going to be sick. And by this time I was getting to know him. I said, we'll be sick then. So I pulled over, he got out, and I got out, as I say, because I was wising up to him by now. He, <laughs> he walked over to the fence. I said, well, then be sick. He sort of looked at me like this, and then took off down the road. Mm -hmm. And this is like about two o'clock in the morning. It's like, I don't know. And I caught up with him, obviously, because he had these like six inch platforms on. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't difficult. <laughs> and you could see I was catching up with him. So he laid down in the middle of the, on the, middle of the road on the white line, saying, I want to die, I want to die. Mm -hmm. I wasn't even a hedgehog in sight. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> that closeness to your grandmother and your mother and your dad mm. out in the wings somewhere, did that did that shape your personality? It did make me feel kind of a loner and it created my, I didn't want anyone to come into my own world. Um, I'm very good at giving love and not receiving it, so I'm very good at going, entering else into someone else's world, but for someone to enter my world, I always put my barriers up. It's what I've always wanted, to be loved and to have a really wonderful, close relationship with someone. Um, and that's something with David I'm, I'm trying to work out. Um, and we've been together quite a while now, and, and I, for him to give me a lot of love, which he does, I find very difficult, and yet it's what I've always wanted. And I, my instinct is, yes, I love this, and I want the physical tender and, and the affection, but I tend to want, there's that part of me that I've created that wants to push it away. So um, I think that shaped me a lot when I was growing up. Why do they think it performed the way it did? And nobody knows. No. We've had everything for it, we've done everything for it. Obviously the people either don't want to buy the single or wait for the album or they don't like the record. It's as simple as that. Right. But we, I've never had a single with more going for it than this one. Was it something to do with the promotion, was it not? I don't know. It was 13 midweek and we did had Top of the Pops and the chart show and it went down after that, so... Jonathan Green? All right, well, I spoke to my own Are you worried about I mean, it? I know that... I think it's over and done with now. I mean, I think nothing, they, 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 worry about it, it'll go down this week. I think that'll be the end of it. Shoot, you know, I mean, uh, uh, which is a grave disappointment. Grave! 
Correct! Disappointment! I shall just have to recall how much is that doggy in the window instead. <laughs> That's destined to be hit. It will be, dear. <laughs> Do you think you get too obsessed about your record sales? No. Um, not to say, I just like to know whether it's exciting for me. That's part of it. When a record comes out, I like to see how it does. Mm. And, um, you know, if I was to put a record out and I didn't care how it was doing, I, that would be a very strange state of affairs, wouldn't it? I mean, like, I've always been fascinated with that ever since. It's the, that's the most exciting part of having a record coming out. Sometimes it's also the most disappointing. Mm. Um, at the moment, the, the single in England has gone up two places, and I'm very un unhappy because I think it's a great song. Um, but, you know, you can't do anything about it. It's been the most played record on the radio. We've done everything, so you can't force people to buy it. Because mm, so. you're, I mean, you're incredibly passionate about it. Yeah, well, I'm passionate about my work. This evening, Derek, on Tuesday night, about 6.15. Six, 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 yeah, we'll check it out. Bye, Derek. Bye, Derek. Bye, Derek. Bye, Derek. Bye, Derek. Bye, Derek. Spanish pokey. Spanish. Oh. <laughs> Actually, you'd, you'd look great in a mantilla, don't you think? A what? Mantilla. What's a mantilla? That's when you wear the comb on top of your head with the veil coming down the oh, Thank you very much. All my unfavorite flowers in one bouquet. Fabulous. It's the thought that counts. Yeah, it's the thought that counts. Yes. But I just really think that flowers in that kind of arrangement are given really no chance at all to bloom and shine because that's so... <laughs> I just low the range. I mean, people who have flower arranging classes or teach people how to flower, flower arrange like that should be shot, basically. <laughs> I mean, it's just a hideous profession. I don't think we'll put this in the documentary. Well, I don't know why. I mean, like, flower arranging is such a waste of time. It's nice to do in the verse, but not in some of those styrofoam things like that. That is a complete and utter abomination. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about Tina Sparkle. Tina Sparkle is um, my right-hand hairdresser. <laughs> He's so nice. I love him. He's lovely, Tina, isn't he? You still have to give us a kiss, Tina. Mmm. Mm. 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 What are you doing? I just, I always write these numbers down for the um, charts in America and for Britain. Why do you do that? It just keeps a record of it. So you know how everything's sold? Yeah. Do you feel trapped by it all sometimes? Yeah, a bit. Yeah? But I love it. You do love it, don't you? I love it. No, you think you should, I mean, take a rest, a proper rest? Because you, you, com you complained before Christmas you were overtired and you hadn't you'd worked solidly for four and a half years and that when the year was over, you were going to take six months off. Now you're telling me you're going to keep your projects writing, on the right. go. Well, it's not, though, because, I, I mean, I know when you wrote the Believe album, you, it, yeah, but you I, came over every night, you were you were. So I'm not gonna, yeah, but I'm not going to be recording an album myself, particularly. No, oh, don't discuss it now. <laughs> Am I making you feel uncomfortable? No. But I, I, it's intoxicating, and I, I mean, I can see why you get caught up in it. That's what I do. But are, are you ever worried of not having enough balance in your life, or you just... I mean, what is, I mean, what is balance for you? I don't know. I mean, I'm spending enough time with you, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Busted! Oh, you spend, I mean, you, you spend a lot of time with me. I mean, I don't know, shush. Temptation strong 
three warring factions, really, me, who was determined to do music. My daddy wanted me to do something else, and more responsible and respectable. And my mother, who was torn between the two and always defended me anyway. I was frightened of him. He was, he was yeah. frightened of him. And I knew he was frightened of him, so that used to make me... He wasn't overly, more vicious. He wasn't overly vicious to me but he, uh, at all, but he was very strict. Um, and I was just... I don't think he liked you very much, and, and it was the fact that if ever he could have a little dig, I mean, like, such as table manners. You know when you're frightened, you drop things, don't you? And yet normally he'd be relaxed and, and quite normal. But as soon as his father was there, he had that fear. You, fright, you were frightened, yeah, don't you? I was afraid. This is 1963. And he says, I was very pleased that he passed his grade seven with merit. And he must really work now to pass his grade eight quickly and go on to his degree if he really wants to make something of it. However, I'm most concerned about him is he is now 16 and yet he still behaves like a child of 13 or 14 with the fanciful notions of becoming a star and rocking and holy all the time. <laughs> <laughs> with a lyric sheet and you write a song in what how long never usually more than an hour um, to be fair um that's the way i like to do it i mean it's the way i work i don't find it odd other people find it odd but i'm not a guitarist i don't carry something around me every day and sort of like oh i've got this great song man and i listen to this one i've just written this thank god um all right so i very i don't i spend very little of my time writing the songs that i actually go and <laughs> out on the road and sing um, that, if, it, if it doesn't come to me within an hour, then I abandon it or come back to it or abandon it completely. Did you bring the lyrics? Of course I did. Good girl. Oh my God, I'm so honoured. I wanted you to do it. The only thing, 45 minutes I could fit you in all year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'm I, like, I'm going to write this as the only 45 minutes. No, I said minutes. I really wanted Elf to do it. And he fitted me yeah. in. I wanted to fit you in because I love you. Oh, I love you too, but I'm so excited about this. I was nervous, you know. I was very nervous about coming. But okay. I think maybe this is the best lyric. I can never tell till I get out there. Um, sure, well, I, I wouldn't know how you could tell. I don't know how you could. I, I know anyone who does this, but you. You write a lyric and you put the tune around. I mean, it's. Do you know how to do it? Nobody else can do that. <laughs> so don't ask me. Mm. But but uh, this one I see is how it That's more nice. Feel. That's this is there, yeah. Let me go up with over that, can I? Can you give me the rhythm as soon as possible? Yeah, he's just, he's just there to sing it up. I'll tell you what, do you want to hear it in here and I'll just take it out of the headphones? <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe it! <laughs> and my heart is dead Actually, Matthew Keith, I like that. Because you, you really were for My heart tells me for sure that love no lie. And you really were fighting for You got me ready. I am just having a 
off to Paris. Are you? Yes, going yeah. to Paris, yeah, and then to America. No to the Oscars. What? I'm going to America after Paris, oh, yeah. to the Oscars, you know, the film? Because I'm up front. They might get an Oscar really award. Oscar. Yeah. I might win one this year. I hope you get half a dozen. No, one. I, I, one will do. <laughs> How Did are you, you go and get one mm. before? No, it's the first time I I've been... I thought you had four. No, I've got four Ivan Novello... No, seven Ivan Novello awards. But not... This is the first time I've written for a film, so... Oh. We might win one. You never know. Oh, you see me on top of the pops? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. You were enjoying yourself. Well, I was pretending to enjoy myself. Isn't it lovely we've got the television we can watch? Yeah. And all your lovely flowers, look. Yeah. Are they beautiful? You still get your flowers every week from yes. me? Yes. Good. Yeah, I thought you'd send them. Yeah, every week you get flowers from me. I know. No matter I where I am. The, I said to the nurse, it must be help and someone yeah. sending them. No, we, we send you them every oh. week. <laughs> anyway, you take care and you keep well. Did you get my car from Japan? My postcard? Yes, I Good. did. Thank right. you very much. All right. Very kind of you to think. No, oh, you silly old sausage. Love you. An autre question pour moi. You never use your own name when you stay in a hotel. What have been some of the names you have used? Well, I'm registered here as a Colin Chihuahua. Um, I've been um, Prince Fubu. I've been Sir Humphrey Handbag. I've been Binky Poodle Clip. I've been Sir Horace Pussy. My mother rang up to ask for Sir Horace Pussy and then she had <laughs> in Paris and they said, who is Colin? She had to say Mrs. Pussy. She wasn't pleased. Um, I wanted to be Fanny Beaver Snatchclit on this tour, but um, being so PC in America, they, the operators wouldn't say it because they thought it was really sort of degrading to women. So I couldn't be Fanny Beaver Snatchclit. Shame, really. <laughs> because I've always been a bit of a cunt. Are you nervous? Quite honestly, I'll be glad when it's all over and done with because there's, so, there's been so much build up for this. and. Uh, I think if we do win, when the, once the statue, then we can actually relax. And uh, or when, when the results announce whether we win or not, then it's like, oh, thank, it's over now. We can relax. This, yeah. How do you want the silky ones? These. Okay. Sorry. Have you prepared yourself or not, really? Yeah, I'm practicing my smile. How's the party going to be for that one? Eh? Oh, it'll be all right. I mean, come on. I mean, it's, it'll be fine. I'm, I, you know, I used to be chairman of a football club, I know how to lose. Stage in a glamorous Winnebago at the Academy Awards, waiting for it to start. Why aren't you out front? Why not out front? Yeah. Because I don't want to be. Why? I said I don't want to sit in an audience for that amount of time and then perform. I, you know, it's if you're performing, it's nice to be back. Yeah. With a huge ass. Are you having a nap? Yes. I've got nothing else to do. What was that? I wouldn't mind a pillow, but there's not a pillow. No, there is. Is it a pillow? It's a pillow. Yeah. yeah. No, no, it's fine. Ah, look, it's a... The excitement builds backstage. <laughs> what is that from? My friend here is up. The best animal documentary. <laughs> <laughs> mm. The demise of the African hippo. <laughs> <laughs> Which is Lee. two to one on favourite. Do I have to take this abuse? <laughs> <laughs> two to one.
21 years I've been with it. Uh, 21 years. 21 years too long. Mm. <laughs> well, that's a scrumptious thing, though, aren't you? Hey! Hey! <laughs> It's Elle. It's, it's glamour. It's Hollywood. It's glamour, Bob. Hey, that's right, Dave. Hollywood, the Oscars, hey. <gasps> that's nice. Yeah, she looks great. Look at that. Look at those chins. He looks oh, hideous. She's so pretty. Slim, you look. You look really good. Oh. <laughs> and the winner of the Oscar is Elton John and Tim Rice. Can you feel the love tonight? Thank you very much. This is such an exciting night. Um, I'd like to thank the members of the Academy for this incredible honor. To, uh, to Hans Zimmer, who did a wonderful job with the songs, to everybody at Disney, uh, to my parents who are here tonight, to David, to John Reed, um, to my friends in Utah, and to everyone who worked on this most enjoyable project. This is an incredible honor for me. Um, I'd like to dedicate this award to my grandmother, Ivy Sewell. She died last week. and. She was the one that sat me down at the piano when I was three and made me play. So I'm accepting this in her honor. Thank you very much. It's enough to make kings and vagabonds believe the very best. Could you have done it without Bob? No. I would be dead by now. And I say that really seriously without being flippant. I would be dead by now. And I would not have enjoyed the, a millionth as much as I have with having both there. I'd like a print of this. <laughs> no, I mean, we just, we've been through it together. I mean, we start, I mean we've had so many great times. There have been so many dramas. It's our 20s, mate. We've but I couldn't, no, I couldn't have done it without Bob. Without. And vice versa. <laughs> Come on, Dave.
there have been 10 out of 12 days where I've been working, either doing a show or uh, I did something for Planet Hollywood on Sunday. And uh, before that, I did Oliver Peoples, Elton John A's Foundation. We had board meetings. Um, but Sunday was the day that um, a friend of mine who worked for the band and someone I've known for seven years, who was 24, died um, of AIDS. And um, even though we were expecting him to die in a couple of weeks, um, it just shook me. Yesterday, you came to lift me up As light as straw and brittle as a bird you know, I've lost quite a few people this year. Um, people that I really loved a lot, and I haven't been able to cry. Worried a bit because I've just been kind of numb to it all. And um, I think the mark maybe, it just set me off. I mean, he was 24. And um, once he got ill, he never had another chance. Uh, he just got ill and died. And, you know, he was the sweetest boy. As fear grows, please hold me in your arms. How many people have you seen die of AIDS? I don't know. Seen actually die, I don't know. Um, I've, I haven't really stopped to count the amount of people I've lost, but I've, I don't know. I don't really think about it. I don't go chalking up on a blackboard. Too fucking many. Um, and so many people seem to be sick at the moment. And, uh, you know, it's just... Really, really boring. What do you think about politicians in America who say that AIDS isn't really a problem? Well, I just think they're misinformed. I think they're bigoted, um, and I think their anger is uh, homophobic. Really, I mean, they're just um, the anger is aimed towards the, the homosexual community, uh, whereas a, a lot of the uh, AIDS, most of the AIDS increase is coming via the, the heterosexual community uh, at the moment. So. Um, it's, you know, bigots will be bigots and they will attack the people they hate the most, so um, it doesn't surprise me. When you do a concert for the Foundation, it's so much more pleasurable than even when you do a normal concert because you know you're raising a lot of money for a really good cause. That is Hi guys. Hey everybody. Hi. How you doing, George? It's a pleasure to meet you, RuPaul. I've always been comfortable with my sexuality. Living a lie is just, it's, it's not worth it. You only get one attempt on this earth, and it's just far better to be yourself. And if others don't like it, then tough shit. Where's George? Oh, there he is. Child, he's not in the right place at the right time, honey. No. <laughs> as you might well know, and uh, I've had a lot of love and acceptance in this country. This has been my second home for many, many years. This is where I came out in this country. I slept with half of it. And I came out of it HIV negative. I was a lucky, lucky person. It's my job to repay that debt. today? We're at the hotel in Cap Ferrat, looking out of the Mediterranean, 98 degrees. Very hot. And what is it you're doing in the south of France? 
basically I'm trying to have a holiday. How easy is it for you just to switch off while you're on holiday? Switching off is very difficult, probably. Um, because if you've been working non-stop for like 13 weeks or 12 weeks as it were on the European tour, um, you just can't switch off straight away. It's like doing a show and when you come back at night it's very hard for me to get to sleep straight away, even though I'm tired. Um, relaxing is, is easy. I've been relaxing on this holiday quite a lot. And are, are you afraid of being alone on holiday? I mean, could you go on holiday and not have a driver and not have a valet and not have a tennis coach? Probably, but I mean... Uh, no, I wouldn't enjoy it very much. I mean, most people go on holiday and sit on the beach with a thousand other people. I couldn't stand that. Um, I'm quite private here. Most people fend for themselves during the day, and uh, I go out for dinner at night with my friend. If I was to ask you to do something that you didn't want to do on the holiday, would you do it with me? Like what? I don't know. Water skiing? No. Um, drive through the country? No. Lie by the pool? No. <laughs> I walk down by the coast? No. See, I would, I would love to, there's a beautiful path that goes around the perimeter of the cab, which late in the evening isn't too hot and isn't too busy and there aren't many people around. I would love to just go for a walk with you, because I think that's a very special thing that two people can do together. And sometimes I think that would be really nice. But you wouldn't do that? Not really. No? <laughs> that one I might consider, but the other three are absolutely no-no's. Now, a lot of people would be interested to see what you bring on holiday with you. Here we have the vitamins. So those are the vitamins you take with you everywhere on the yeah, road? Yeah, absolutely. We take... Um, Buy lots of um, food, Marks and Spencer's muffins, frozen in there because they're nice and healthy. Let me just have a look at this. Mm -hmm. um, bottle of HP sauce potting through there. And now you enter the world of my closet. <laughs> <laughs> well, um... What have you got with you? Go out, walk me through it. These are suits. Here. These are jackets. Here. Jackets are here. These are shirts, obviously. And these are shirts. These are all silk shirts. Shoes, of course. All these are different kind of glasses. They're sunglasses. These are clear frames. These are pink, blue, burgundy, um, and purple frames. More sunglasses. All prescription, of course. Um, Silver and gold and black frames. Brown, green, and red frames. And over here, very important for anybody traveling on the road is two tiaras, because you never know when you're going to get invited to something really formal. So it has been worn on more than one occasion. So that's the closet, really. Can I, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Why do you travel with so much stuff? Um, because I never know what to wear, so I like to have a choice. And also, if you're away from home for like a year and a half, you have to have your home like with you, so wherever we go, it's like this is my closet at home, so it feels like I'm at home, because traveling is so boring, um, and hotels, even though they're beautiful and luxurious, you, you, t you tend to get homesick, so I tend to take my home with me when I go and travel on the road. It keeps me kind of sane. People think you're crazy, but um, it is crazy, but it does keep me sane. Do you feel a pressure as a big star to constantly be well-dressed and to have to wear different things all the time? No, it's fun. I don't feel any pressure. I just like to feel good. What would you respond to people who say that having this many clothes is indulgent or obscene or, or wasteful? Would you agree with that? Yeah, in a way, I suppose, yeah. Um, uh, a lot of the stuff is, you know, is given to me and made for me. And, uh, but I suppose it is. It's crazy. Um, I can't defend myself in that respect. Um, but for some reason, I find it comforting. Does it make you feel guilty at all? Um, no. I have to be honest with you, no. I remember when Rock was young Me and Susie had so much fun Holding hands and skimming stones Had a no gold chair and a place of my own But the biggest kick I ever got Was doing a thing called the Crocodile Rock While the other kids were rocking round the clock We were hopping and bobbing to the Crocodile Rock Well, Crocodile Rock and Shop, and when your feet just can't keep still 
What just happened? That's I don't want to talk about it. Mm, it's supposed to be on fucking holiday. <sighs> What's wrong? I'm never coming here again. I've never come to the south of France again. Right. Uh, can you get me a plane tomorrow? Yeah, yeah, tomorrow. I'll come back tomorrow afternoon. Yeah. Yeah, OK. Um, like a six o'clock takeoff, something like that. Yeah, into Farnborough. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Oh, right, bye. Are you really going? Yep. Why? I have had it here. <laughs> Excuse me. Thank you. You want to tell me what happened? Oh, I just lost my temper. of this bloody woman at the end of the court waving to me. Yoo-hoo! And, um, yeah, it just pissed me off. Why did that make you so angry? Uh, because, you know, I'm always having people waving at me and going, yoo-hoo, and uh, it's just, uh, you know, it's, I take my tennis very seriously and I just couldn't handle it. Who stays in? Tom Petty stays in. Shantae Moore stays in. Mary the Babe Blige comes out for the time being, as I've been playing it on uh, early Sunday times. Great album, Mary J. Blige, My Life. Um, Aerosmith's big ones. Yeah. So we have to replace three. So in at number six is the Brecker Brothers with one out, out of the loop. Tom Petty, fabulous, Chante Moore. I've got to find three replacements. Let's just file these away. <laughs> We're going to replace. Elton John with Massive Attack, if I can find it. Massive Attack, which I love. And who else? I just want to film you and film your response to an interview that I did while you were over in America with Beachy, um, who is your therapist, because I think that he says some provocative things, and some of them may or may not be appropriate for what we're doing, but I'm just curious to get your response. So are you happy to do that? Mm-hmm. Like he buys a lot of people? Do so you think he buys people? Yeah. Yeah, he does. How, how does he buy them? How does that? I think he buys them with his, um, with his personality. I think he buys a lot of them with gifts. Mm. I mean, I think a lot of people just, you know, feed off that. Mm. Um, He's surrounded by some good, close people. Thank the Lord God for it. Mm. I, I always think it's like a medieval court. Hi. When he goes for a downer, his ultimate payoff line, when I keep saying to him, look, you, you have no reason to be this way. Everything is going well. You, you should be happy. You should be looking forward to what's coming up. It always boils down to the fact that he says, well, I don't like myself. Yeah, that's right. He hates himself. That part of him does. Um, he's happy when he's playing and stuff the moments of it, but then he doesn't believe the audience reaction. I actually seen it, and he, and he just go, nah, it's not true. Mm. It's not fucking true. I'm gonna look at this. Mm. Can you spot an empty seat? Why do you think he became addicted to alcohol? I think, drugs, he, I think that he, he was born an addict. He is a totally obsessive, compulsive person. He, um, if it hadn't been the alcohol, it would have been the drugs. If it hadn't been the drugs, it would have been the food. If it hadn't been the food, it would have been relationships. If it hadn't been relationships, it would have been the shop. And do you know what? I think he's got all five. I really do. Listening to you and Beach was like a couple of vultures pecking over a kind of a, a carcass in a way. I mean, the things in the South of France when we had arguments were to do with you and I. They weren't just because I was, um, you know, tired and everything. And this bit about being on the machine, I like working for a living, you know. I've told you that before, I've liked working for a living. And everybody wants me to do what they want me to do. But the actual thing, I am always going to do what I want to do. And if people don't like that, then they can leave, you know, or they can do what they want. Um, as far as slowing down goes, everyone's like, oh, I want him to slow down, I want him to slow down. Uh, why do they want me to slow down? Why do they want me to slow down? What's it to them? 
you're talking about me in there like some fucking piece of soap powder, and um, I found that irritating. Did you find that hard? I found it irritating. I found it offensive, um, some of it, because I have to. You know, I, I'm so I'm responsible for certain people's livelihoods, apart from my own, and I work. You know, I care for those people, huh. and I don't think I buy them. Um, I'm sorry if it's made you feel uncomfortable, because well, not, not all of it made me feel uncomfortable. I found a lot of it interesting. A lot of it was extremely accurate. Huh. I mean. Um, what was what was really accurate? What's what? Well, what, what about my, you know, the bit about my the way I'm compulsive and 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 the way I had them about my self-esteem. But I think my self-esteem has gotten better. I mean, Beachy said was about you know the, it doesn't be able to accept the audience thing, and that was true for a long time. But I think truly on this um, tour that we just done, I I began to crack that, and, and I've known I've had to crack it, and I still I'm still not there all the way yet with it as far as personal um, compliments and stuff like that go. Um, it's hard to um, to start loving yourself. All this bit about you've got to love yourself, you've got to love yourself. You are, you know, I know that, but it doesn't happen overnight. It's 43 years behavior is not going to change overnight. It's certainly not going to happen in five years. If it did, it would be miraculous. But it is changing. <laughs> Paced, different from everywhere else that I live. I can drive myself. I get to uh, go to the, the great galleries here. Great, two great photographic galleries, James and uh, Faye Gold. Great artists here. Um, it's got everything here I could possibly ever want. It's just very easy paced. Now we're going here and we're going to Berkeley. Very nice. There's a fax coming through from England on from today newspaper about, um, it's, which has been in the paper before and recently about the top 20 money earners in British uh, rock and roll. And, um, and it's common knowledge you can find out what everyone's earning and stuff like that. What, what, is, what does it say about you? I says I'm not one of <laughs> If you write songs that continually sell and your back catalogue sells, it's, you know, it's it's a very lucrative, and you own your own song, which I do now. So um, it's a culmination of 25 years hard work. Um, I mean, I've been through a hell of a lot in my life. It's been a roller coaster ride of fabulous times, really low times, and terrible irresponsibility on my behalf. Um, and the only person I don't think I've made my amends to that I've hurt is my ex-wife, Renata, who um, we don't really see each other and communicate. And I think. That's, and that's the way she wants it, and I understand that. But I'm, I'm, I'm an optimist, and I feel one day that I can make my apologies and we can be friends. I have to say that she's one of the best people I've ever met in my life, and I don't have one negative thing to say about her. We do Philadelphia Freedom, and I need electric Canada. This is Bob. This is Bob, the fabulous personal assistant of the artist Elton John. Loyal, underpaid, <laughs> and <So>. wait. <laughs> <laughs> 
underpaid cheek. <laughs> no. Yes, underpaid. And how loyal? So so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, there you are. <laughs> My, my hair, dear, isn't it? <laughs> How about this? <laughs> An old cow. Where are we? Where are what? Oh, you stupid bitch. You gave them to me. Don't put these on. You put them on there. This is what it's like. Nightmare. Check bag. Artist. Yes, ready. Take that. Pookie, pookie, for the show, show, show. Kissy, your voice. Kissy, kissy, kissy. What happened on the first night in Raleigh Durham was that I had a problem with the monitors and I probably oversang and strained my voice. Show last night, the monitors were fine, but you know, I, it's a two hour, 45 minute show and um, you know, we went for it. I, I can't do a show unless I go for it 100%. And um, today I got up and I couldn't even speak. Uh, Lucy just made me some fabulous Guatemalan tea, so I can now speak. But I know that um, if I do the show tonight, and I probably could get through it somewhat, um, it might gnaws up the voice for the rest of the tour, and I don't want to do that. If, if your voice is um, weak, will you cut the pair short? No, no, let's see what happens. I'll take these with us, though.
once we get Santiago out of the way, we're on the home stretch. I just, I'm very homesick. Um, I really want to go home, but I can't because, you know, I have to do these shows. It's just in between shows, just think every minute seems like an hour. And I guess that's why they call it the blues. Almost end of the tour. Yeah, one more fucking interview. I don't know how many fucking interviews I've done this year. Oh. 1,226. Yes, about right. You're not looking forward to this? I just, I've, I've had enough, dear. I don't know how Mrs. Jagger does it. She speaks to her in wildebeests. <laughs> um, I just want to get out of here and go home. It's the 108th show of the year to over 2 million people. And I probably sound like a miserable, whining so-and-so, but I'm just tired, basically. Yeah, there again. Yep. City. <laughs> the trial was <laughs> marvelous. And don't forget to wave when you get out. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> That's a good What if your music stops selling one day? I don't even think about it. I don't project like that. You can't think like that. Oh, that's an unhealthy way to think. But what if it did? You woke up tomorrow and Elton John music stopped selling. <laughs> and they stopped playing it on the radio. It's not going to happen. I'm telling you. It just doesn't work like that. It's not going to happen. It doesn't work like that. I mean, if I'd had two, two hit singles and then one album, yeah, I would be worried about it. But I mean, I've been around for 25, 26 years. It's not going to happen. You can safely say that. You're, laughing, you're laughing in the background there, Bob. No, because I can't get the cut war balls in the drawer. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think album music will always sell? No. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
gets a little bit funny This feeling inside I'm not one of those who can easily hide I don't have much money But boy, if I did Buy a big house where we both could live If I was a sculptor But then again, no Or a man who makes potions in our travel and shoes We're sitting here and it's about six months since the documentary's gone out and uh, a lot of people have been surprised by the honesty of it and really are curious to know why you agreed to make it in the first place. Well, the reason I wanted to make it was because I didn't, as I said in the beginning of the documentary, I didn't want to do one of those kind of South Bank things which I find terribly boring. And, um, you know, I just wanted to do something a little bit more groundbreaking and to find out something about me, warts and all. Normally you don't find out anything about warts and all things about people till, uh, till they're dead. Do you feel that the film overall is an accurate depiction of your life? It's an accurate uh, uh, depiction of my life when I'm touring, yes. When I'm on holiday for two weeks in the south of France and you're asking me would I do this and would I do that, and I <laughs> laugh even now when I see it. It really is no holiday, it's a wind down period um, between working in, in Europe and working in America. But no, I mean, I am a man with a mission. When I'm on the road, I'm on the road. And, yeah. and until I reach the end of that tour, Nothing else is in my mind except the performances and the next gig and whatever. And uh, so um, I can become a bit sort of tunnel visioned. Mm. What's your favorite part of the documentary? Yeah, something that you love best? I love the Bob Halley repartee. I love the way I destroy the flower arrangement. I, that makes <laughs> me laugh. Um, I like the bit with my grandmother because it's the last time I saw her. And the bit with my mother. Um, but the funny bits, I like the humor in it. Can you remember what your reaction was the very first time you saw it? Yeah, I said, oh, I'd like, to, I'd like to, it to have gone on a bit longer. I mean, at the beginning of the film, I have this, you know, bit about doing the videos and I don't have, like seeing myself on film. I have, I've got a poor self-image. But I had no problem with myself in that, um, even with the bad behavior bits and everything like that, because it was how I am. That's exactly what the brief of the program. Well, a couple of people pointed out it must be a therapeutic thing to do. I think it was a therapeutic thing yeah. to do. Um, because you can learn from it and you can see how you do behave. Yeah. And uh, it didn't make me that uncomfortable. Is this a turning point for you? Maybe. You know, I, I think it was a very healthy thing to do. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I, and I didn't think so at the time, but having done it and finished it and seen the end result, um, I wanted to see more. Uh, I, I, I just found it really funny. Even the tantrums I found funny. Yeah. Um, I just think, you know, it's just such outrageous behavior and it's so funny. And some of the press were brilliant. They, I mean, someone said it was like Bet Lynch storming around with a leopard skin coat on, which was a very accurate description. <laughs>
and it's all divided up into categories like fruit, grains and starches, protein, fats and milk and vegetable and salad, milk at breakfast, vegetable and salad for the rest of the day. So it's um, it's a it's a procedure I go through with religious monotony, um, but it's a good procedure for me to go through, I know it helps me. And um, Once I get a procedure stuck in my head it's very hard, I'm a very regimented person, I like um, that kind of, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, that regimentation in my life, that routine, that regime, keeps me centred. Um, it's like discipline. Yeah, it's a discipline. I mean, before, I, when I was in, uh, heavily under the influence of drugs and stuff, there was no discipline in my life at all. It was just one roller coaster ride. Now this is like the cornerstone of, and the, of my life. Is um, you know, I do my meditations in the morning and uh, or the evening, and I do write this down, and it just um, it just reminds me where I came from, so that I don't get too carried away and think that I know everything. Um, which can happen very easily. <laughs> so today, for breakfast, was the same as yesterday. See what I say about routine. <laughs> Twelve rashers of bacon, two dozen eggs, and four pounds of mushrooms. That should start me off well. <laughs> as long as you write it down, right? <laughs> yes, it's, you've got to be truthful about it as well. Um, no good cheating. Everything starts with me as far as my addictions go, starts with food. Food was the first addiction I had, then probably music. <laughs> and then, um, of course, it manifests itself in alcohol and drugs later on. Um, I still addicted to shopping. Um, that's probably the only addiction I have left, and collecting. Um, but they, I don't think they're unhealthy things, and um, I just know that I have addictive personality. I wish I could change it and, and, and you know, and be more probably procrastinate and be, What's the word? I wish I could procrastinate more on things, but I can't. I'm an impulsive and compulsive person, and I accept that away by myself, and uh, uh, I'll deal with it when it arises. Do you think you could ever go back and have a stage in your life where you could eat sugar but have it in balance or have it in moderation? Or is that, is that, is that, is that a goal you'd like? To do it. No, I don't think so. You know, when you are signed to a major record company and they give you a vast sum of money for doing an album, then it, it's... Um, you have to do it. I mean, you just, you know, it's no good saying, you know, well, I'm not doing it. I, I get extremely well paid for what I do. And, you know, and we all get into situations where we don't, you know, we were a little unhappy with our record company. I have not been unhappy at Fulligram, but I've been unhappy several times in my life within situations with record companies. Um, but I signed the contract. I knew what I was getting into, and therefore I had to work my contract out and then you know, go somewhere else. So are you, are you all this slave nonsense and all this, you know, this, you know, I, I don't really agree with it. I just think, you know, you sign a contract in good faith and sometimes in any business it can go wrong, but if you sign a contract in good faith then you should keep to it. And then, you know, especially when you're being paid vast, vast sums of money. So are, are you contractually obliged to do the promotion that you do? Or is it uh, I'm not contractually obliged, but I ha um Morally obliged? Um, morally obliged, yeah. And, I, you know, I have a great relationship with Alan um, Levy at Phonogram and I, you know, I would like to do anything I can to repay back the faith he's had in me for the last 15 or 16 years since I've been on Polygram, you know. Mm. It's um, it's nice to have a good relationship with the record company. So Do you get upset when, I mean, I'm thinking of Sunday when you basically went to bed for the whole day because you were so upset about the single results. I mean, does, do you think, does it upset you that it has that kind of control in your life or do you just accept that as part of the it's game? It's just part and parcel of it. You, you, the, the high is going to be high and the lows are going to be low. And, um, if you're so artist, if you I've never been so artistically involved with the record before for so long. Well, I don't think ever before, and um, and th that affected me. And, and I, you know, it's it's a day out, out of 365, and it was over and done with the next day. But I I took it personally, and I took it badly. Yeah. Was it because for so many years of your life you weren't in control? You were you were addicted to the drugs. You were having problems with the alcohol maybe you weren't appreciating your work, or maybe there wasn't as much richness to it then as there is to it now. Well, I wasn't appreciating my work, but my work kept me going through all that thing. I certainly didn't appreciate it. You can't appreciate it when you're that out of it all the time. But I don't, you know, there's this thing that keeps coming up in this conversation about work. What is so wrong about working? I don't get, you know, it's like I'm 48, I'm still young. What is so wrong about working? People who are 60 are made to retire when they have so much left to give society. Um, I think it's wrong. and then. Their life seems, if they haven't got it together, seem to fall apart because they have nothing to do and they feel that they, they're not giving of themselves. I don't think there's anything wrong in working. I mean, I, why do you work? Why do you work? What's wrong with working? Most people, I work much harder than I do. I just, I just, I want, 
I think this might come as a surprise to some people to see that you're so driven and you work so hard. I think if I stopped working, my soul would die, kind of, in a way, which, you know, a part of me would be, um, I'd like to work, and I don't think there's anything wrong with working. A lot of what the press focus on about you is, oh, there goes Elton in another flash Versace outfit, or there goes Elton in one of his Bentleys, or there goes Elton on his, you know, 25,000 pound a day holiday or whatever. Um, and there's this impression that you lead this incredibly lush, jammy life. I do. I li I feel, I, well, I do lead a lush, jammy life. Yeah, but you but work, work very hard. hard. Yeah. yeah, you work but hard. But it is, it, and I, I mean, it's, it's, uh, uh, it is a lush, jammy life. I mean, and I work hard, um, but I get exceptionally well paid for what I do. And, I, and I, believe me, I appreciate that. What are you doing tomorrow? Nothing really. Uh, having dinner with Rod and Rachel because I wasn't around for his 50th birthday, and he's the sort of person. I mean, I've yet to say to my left hand when I reminisce about things, but Rod and I have always been huge rivals. We both kind of broke at the same time. Him a little bit earlier than me, um, and we've always had records out at the same time. We've always seemed to be competitive with each other. And there are times when we've loved each other and had a laugh, and there are times when we've fallen out and been bitchy to each other. But my career wouldn't have been as much fun if I hadn't have had that other person get on my nerves. Nothing much to add, really. I was to say that um, you'll never get two more British tarts standing next to each other <laughs> if you could try. <laughs> two huge success stories, mine a little bit more than his. But no. <laughs> Looking at my life, I'm so glad that he and I have had that competitive run together. It wouldn't have been as much fun. And it's, I suppose I got to a stage in my life and I can reminisce and see it. Sometimes I wanted to strangle him. Sometimes he wanted to murder me. And sometimes we just laughed and laughed and laughed. And you need that. <laughs> as I was making a wish when I was cutting the cake, I was thinking about his album coming out and hoping to <laughs> down, down, down the charts in Peru. <laughs> <laughs> which is his biggest market. <laughs> When we get together, it's, you know, we're shamelessly, shamelessly hateful to each other. No, seriously, thank you all for coming. This is a very exciting time of my life. Now I've had the hysterectomy, everything seems to be going much better. <laughs> Rod was with me at my side, oh, all the pain. <laughs> I sent him a Zimmer frame for his 50th birthday. It's one of those things you walk with, you know, and one of those things like you see in the back of the, the, the Sunday supplement <laughs> magazine where I fall and help, and you press a button and panic. Thing. I have to say, all her hair is her own. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And all the nose. Thank you. I've never been jealous of Rod's success, but it's pissed me off sometimes that, you know, his records, are <laughs> his records have done better in England, especially than mine. And then we, and it evens itself out. And um, but when we see each other, we had the, we went to the cup final once. We had the best time. We laughed and laughed and laughed. We went out and bought. We didn't want to be recognised so easily. So we went, went, spent the morning looking around Marks and Spencers and in London for two raincoats. And we couldn't find anything ordinary enough. So we went to a kind of place in Acton and bought these two camouflage jackets. And we were the only people who like Bell and Ben the Flapper member. The only two you could have spotted us a mile off. <laughs> We sat there in these silly hats, and this, uh, it was brilliant. It was Manchester United in Brighton, and it, we had the best time. Stand back. You've got to give up the cigarettes. <laughs> I'll never give up fags. <laughs> Did Rod ever have a problem with your sexuality? Was that ever an issue with him? Because he strikes me as no, a bit Rod's of a lad. No. Rod's always been, in fact, he's set me up sky high, which is great. I mean, you have to have a sense of humour about your sexuality, too. Um, not that I think there's anything wrong with being gay at all, there isn't. But there is, you know, gay people are very funny, I think. Huh. And, um, and we know there's never been a problem with that with Rod.
This is the Boxing Nun, an accessory that everybody should own. Isn't she fabulous? <laughs> you can vent your anger, you can perform supreme song. Baby, baby, where did I love go? Oh, no, no. don't you need me anywhere? Or climb every mountain, ford every stream, follow every byway, till you find your dream. Turn her sideways and make her box at you. And now Sharon Shitbag sings a selection from her new album. I believe it <laughs> That's so we good. Hey, I was made in Barnsley. <laughs> Another hit from their new album, which I recorded here on a tape recorder last February. <laughs> What can we say that hasn't already been said? <laughs> really but I know what hasn't way. been said. What hasn't well, been said? He can play the piano dead good. He can play the piano dead good. Yeah. But and unfortunately, he, he supports the worst football team in the league. Ah, uh, yeah. Now that's dangerous. I'll take it. I'll take him. I'll take him up Port Vale and get that sorted out. You're going to go and watch Vale win. <laughs> vale and Watford. Vale and Watford. That's the match. That's the big How are they doing right now? Oh, they're doing very well. They, they haven't lost all year. Yeah. And this is February. No, I'm telling you, it's January. But so we haven't done it all year. Two weeks, isn't it? Two, two weeks. Two, two, we haven't played all year. Well, so I'll, I'll be quiet. No, Ellen's a top guy. We love him. Oh, love yeah. you. He loves you too. <laughs> 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 Go on, let's say that like, tense. That's coming away from the closer up. Just come a bit closer up. Just what I have to do to sell records. Oh, please, yeah. How <laughs> 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 more than this? <laughs> Alright. Okay. Alright. One more cleavage. I'm new at here. One more cleavage shot, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> come on, get him out. Show us your tits, Alan. Who's in the day? Top man. Come along, come along. Sorry, sorry. Well, say <laughs> Pressure. Pressure. <laughs> and now
I'm in love with a wonderful guy. <laughs> Just go from that. There ain't a thing. Oh, with any man here that can't be killed by putting him near a girl. the ideal thing to go to Satan for his Indian thing. There is nothing like a day. Yeah. <laughs> um, Dal Signal. <laughs> Big fluffy things going on. Gowns. One, two, three. <laughs> Hello, it's me. Um, Mrs. Key's booked us a plane, uh, a Falcon 20, I think maybe the one we had yesterday. 
uh, when we go to Madrid and then Italy. The one we had yesterday was fine, but the toilet was appalling. Okay, great. <coughs> All right, great. Fine. J'ai déjà fait. Oui? Okay. This side. It'd be great if you can do it. I mean, I love that, yeah. of course. <laughs> I, mean, I love it that you don't take yourself too seriously. Like, you think oh, I have to be that little, like, you know. Because that means you really enjoy yourself. Yeah. Love that too. Stay there. Wow. Stay there. You know, my boyfriend gave me an album of yours and he insisted that I must get you to sign it. It's fabulous, the cover. Yeah. Yes, Windsor it's a Castle. Great inspiration for uh, which castle? Windsor. Really? Yeah. I People thought it was my house. I said, no. Your look, <laughs> which it was. I mean, your look was so genius. I thought of doing a headshot for the cover, because yeah. I thought it would be more interesting. But I'd like something a little bit funny for the inside. Mm. I mean, I always relate you to humor. I don't know, maybe mm. it's not true. But I quite like the kitchen because it's got all the vitamins yeah. there. Do, yeah. you, do you take them? Yeah, of course. Like yeah. me, I take yeah. hundreds. And yeah, me too. <laughs> so do you think maybe I could do that? Maybe a portrait of you just in the kitchen with all your vitamins? I, mean, I shot, could give maybe you a very glamorous outfit. Please, because yeah. you know, it's not every day that one gets to photograph you, so... <laughs> I think we've got a, a glamorous outfit. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let it fall. <laughs> you tell me, you scream if you're having... Major I owe everything to bee pollen. Exactly. My career is entirely due to bee pollen. <laughs> Beautiful. She's a healthy girl. Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> Voila. Well, thanks a lot, huh? It's been mm -hmm. divine. Thank you, that's really, fun. really divine. Well, I love them, the Polaroids. Of course, they're <laughs> of course. taken by me, darling. No, no, I really love it because what I was thinking is of maybe doing a close-up of, I've done a close-up of the gold one, so maybe that could be a cover. And then these two could be in the inside. <laughs> So. <laughs> I think you're a bigger poser than he is, dude. Close up. I'm ready for my close up. Ready to the meal. There you go. <laughs> you're full count frame now. <laughs> to do the whole. Hi, welcome to Thank Paris. <laughs>
What sort of um, security arrangements have you made for the shopping trip? Um, so I tried to keep it a little bit more low key, but they advised me that it, it wasn't a good idea. So, so, so what have you laid on? Because it's in quite a small, a small, busy precinct area. What have you laid on for today? Um, well, we've got the six guys. We, I've, we've all, I've kept the interpreters with us. We've got two extra interpreters in case if we have any like crowd problems. But I build up the crowd just to help me coordinate with the police to the best ways to get us out and those sort of things. Are you anticipating some crowd problems? Um, looking at the hotel, yes. Depending on it, you know, because sometimes the promoters <coughs> divulge information about where movements and where stuff. Where people are staying? Yeah, and about where we're planning to visit, which which creates problems. So what have you what have you laid on for today? You've got we got the police the, the police car in, in the front of us with the six guys, two in front and two behind in the car, in a support car. And how many of them are armed? Uh, five of them. Shopping beckons, goodbye. Hysterical. He's got a home phone. Just yeah. Everyone else watch outside. So this floor only for men. For men. Yeah. And second floor for a woman. Yes. Yeah. I don't believe I'm in Versace in Moscow. Oh? I said I can't believe I'm in a Versace in Moscow. Oh. I've got a bicycle. It's only it's one of the salmon collection. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's cow. Yeah, you got those shirts? I know. I'm just looking at see what they have. Great brief, guys. Huh? Beautiful. These are nice. Is that that? Huh? Look there. I got one of those. You got one of those? Uh-huh. Pretty. What do you got? Oh, yeah. Do you have shirts? Oh, shirts. Yeah. Just I've never seen those before, Dad. No. Yeah. I have driving. <laughs> it's uh, our little present for you from our. Uh, oh, thank you very much. It's, it's for you. Thank you. Like this. Oh, like this. Oh, it's okay. oh, quite expensive. Um, all prices in Deutschmarks. Yeah, in Deutschmarks. Yeah. Yeah. Not expensive. Oh, prices in Deutschmarks. Yeah. Deutschmarks not expensive. Okay. I'll try to find 48. <laughs> okay. You got your credit card? Uh -huh. Just gum, just gum the department store. Yeah. Wow.
And what do you think is the secret of his appeal? Talent, 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 <laughs> talent, and again, talent is yeah. such a great artist. I saw his show 15 times, and I never get to bored for one second. I say, oh my God, I have to see another Elton show tonight? You know, I work all day. Then suddenly when he starts, he makes me relax, he makes me happy, he makes me alive. Yeah. It's always, uh, you know, the way to keep your heart, uh, the audience, with the music, with his personality. He, he never let the audience escape from his music. He's genius. I have a very few friends, and Elton is one uh, top of the list. He's so sweet, he cares. Mm. He cares of friends, he's caring the good and the bad. He's really, really a person you can trust. He's loyal to you. It's special. Mm. We met through my work. He came to me and uh, he asked me to design something for him and I was in heaven. Mm. <laughs> well, it's always great to work with such individuality person, with such uh, great artists and performers. Helton has uh, such a sense of fashion, he has such a sense of style, he's uh, such an individual person, he knows what he wants. And what I try to suggest to him is always the things who work for him. I want to make him happy first as a friend, then uh, as an artist. I think Helton is one who changed uh, his look uh, a lot, and he was one who anticipated look many times. It's really, really in interesting to look him through the hair, the way he changed. They like him when he was in frock. Mm. They like <laughs> him now when he's in, in simple things. You know, you can look at um, Madonna or Elton or all these star prince, what they did in fashion. They did wonderful. And Elton was the one who started this. Yeah. I never remember when I first, I, I never cannot remember when I saw uh, Tommy, the movie. Mm -hmm. I was so shocked and he was such a great with sunglasses and all these things. He makes so many looks, so mm. many trends. He's a trendsetter. I think Elton is a double personality. He's like a child, he's very sweet and uh, shy in one way and a lion on the stage. Mm. What I like about him is very curious about culture, about art. He's every day he tries to learn something. It's, this is special about a person who reached such a status and still want to make a, himself better. That's what I like about him. Mm -hmm. He always looking for a, a new exhibition, a new art, a new house, a new, a new friend. It's unbelievable. I think the artist must care of the fans. You know, people, when you look at you, you, you must show the best side of yourself. And this is terrible in Hollywood today. Stars don't care. They are dirty, they mm. are messy. Elton is, uh, that's come from his culture, I think. You know, he's ang made in England. <laughs> <laughs> and then he knows the way to put things together. He looks for quality, not only in his work, in his life too. Oh, all this work he does, all this traveling, it must be stressful. All the time when he, we talk, from, to telephone and say, where you are? I never know where to reach him, yeah. why he's always on a plane. It's yeah. unbelievable how much he work. I think of the, all the artists I know is the harder worker. He, he has what he has, why he deserve it. Mm. It's unbelievable. I think he's one of the great artists of our time. Why he's like Benedetto Michelangelo of piano. He's uh, fun, he has sense of humor, and he's still standing. Why, why he has talent? It seems forever to me, it's almost 10 years, but uh, I cannot see my life without a friend like Elton. I have so much fun with him, he's such a special person. Mm -hmm.
I got Santa's winky this year for Christmas. I got Santa's winky. It's long, black, and shiny, and not very tiny. He came down the chimney out. Did he surprise me this year for Christmas? I got Santa's winky this year for Christmas. I sat on Santa's winky. Ouch! <laughs> you just look, into, look around here for a second. Oh, I'm sorry. It's just sorry. Oh, this is one of those repeating things. Yeah, it's a bit boring, but... It's not about a comedy, I just wonder. Who's got the biggest problem? Who's got the biggest beat? Big cup. Big cup. Big cup. Story of my life. Oh, well.